Now it's my distinct pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Lars Christensen, who is the co-founder of Sexabank. Uh, back in early 90s, where internet was not fully a thing, Lars introduced its, um, recognized its potential f and uh, launched um, effects and, and um, derivatives trading platform and turned that platform into a um, company that is uh, 1,500 um, employees across 20 countries around the world. Today he sees uh, parallels with blockchain and how that may uh, have implications across various areas. And he's in town for the Blockchain Week and has gracefully um, agreed to share his thoughts on w blockchain's potential, blockchain's questions, and where it may pen, pen out. Lars Christensen, everyone. I can see you found a picture from when I actually was an uh, operational CEO in a bank and still wore a tie and shaved occasionally. <laughs> but, uh, but I haven't actually been operational in Saxa Bank for the past three years. Uh, and I sold the last of my shares about six months ago. So I'm at the sort of a new stage in my life. Uh, Saxa Bank, as, as you said, Dimitri, was a very, very early adopter on online trading. Uh, probably the second or the third platform in the world at the time that did particularly foreign exchange online. And, uh, and I think there's a lot of parallels to what we experienced back then uh, and a lot of uh, things you can learn from that, from that time. Uh, when we launched, there was uh, less than 100 million users on, on the Internet and there was a lot of skepticism around was this really going to take off, was it really going to work, would people really ex expect and accept not to speak to dealers anymore and, and blah, blah, blah. And some of the major banks were extremely reluctant to, to, to face up to this potential new competition. So there's a lot of parallels now. I'll get back to that a little bit later on. Uh, I, I also took an early interest in the crypto space because, you know, the cryptocurrency is obviously uh, reminiscent of the fiat currencies which I've been been trading for the last 30 years. So uh, so that was interesting for me and, uh, and uh, also have some libertarian leanings. So, so some of the ideology at the time uh, also appealed to me. So let me congratulate the teams that are here. Uh, today and, and doing their demo day on, on three things really. One, getting as far as you are with your project that you can be here today. Secondly, on choosing, I think, a very exciting field where there's really, really very strong long-term potential. And third, because in contrary to some of the projects out there that you obviously appreciate the importance of, of science and, uh, and basing your projects on solid science, uh, this, uh, this I think is very essential and a very good way to tell good and not so good projects from each other. Are there serious science behind it? Are there serious scientists involved? Uh, that's very much the, the sort of the lacmus test that, uh, that I apply to projects. I wear two hats. Uh, uh, I, I run one project of my own, which uh, you know, I'm not going to stand and, and pitch you here, uh, a layer one block uh, protocol called Concordium. And I'm also an investor in the space. Um, I was fortunate to uh, sell my remaining shares for about 400 million bucks uh, six months ago. And uh, so I'm a little cash heavy and a little project light at the moment. So if anybody got any good ideas, uh, feel free to reach out. My personal f uh, focus right now is on the protocol and the infrastructure side of this space more, more so than the, than the applications. But, but there's never a rule without an exception, as you know. Um, <clears throat> I think we're standing at a, I wouldn't say a crossroad because we're in a, continuously in, a, in, in development here, obviously, but we are at the beginning of a very major transformation, both of this space and, and society in general. We're moving from sort of the early stage uh, anarchists, libertarian, ideologically based projects. And as I said, I have a lot of sympathy for that. Uh, but unfortunately, I also spent 20 years as a CEO of a bank that did retail derivatives. so. I have a certain practical experience of how regulation works, and uh, and it doesn't go very well with anarchism. Um, so so there's going to be a lot of, of of changes in this space, and we just got to be be all prepared to make that transition from uh, from a slightly anarchistic uh, approach to uh, to a practically deployable uh, technology that that uh, also accepts the rules of society in general while still sort of staying true to the, to the DNA of the, of, of the blockchain that, that has a lot to offer. 
Uh, but we're entering clearly a phase of, of regulation. Uh, you probably think we already have entered that phase, and you're right. But I'm also sad to say that you haven't seen nothing yet. Uh, this, this is something that uh, will get rolled out slowly, but efficiently as a steamroller, a little bit behind the curve because it has to be like that. You have to observe and then regulate. But if, if, if what happened in retail derivatives is anything to go by, uh, there's a lot to come yet. Uh, some of it is useful because it focuses your mind. It tells you where, what you can do and what you cannot do. Some of it is, 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 is a bit restrictive on innovation and, and, and not really that much in anybody's favor. But, uh, but uh, just be aware that that is coming and, uh, and it's going to be quite heavy. Clearly, there's a lot of technical stuff to fix here, a lot of scientific challenges. Uh, I think uh, very importantly, we got to move away from anonymity to, to the ability to ID people. Uh, there's got to be a better balance between privacy and transparency in, in, in this space. Gotta, we got to get some easier smart contract programming. We got to find solutions to scalability. We got to build and, and develop sharding, uh, moving away from heavy energy consumption, which is never going to be politically correct, uh, finality, governance, upgradability, form of verification of, of the more serious projects, uh, this, and, 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 and define some, some joint, uh, joint scientific standards, I, I believe, is, is also next. And all of this requires uh, significant, serious uh, scientific progress. So. So I applaud the IBM for, for having such a collaboration with, with uh, Columbia. We're doing something uh, similar with Aarhus University in Denmark, which is very strong in cryptography for a bunch of historical reasons. But there we have the Concordium Blockchain Research Center. Uh, and and uh, while there's already contact between the cryptographers, I know very keen to, to further develop that relationship. And, and we have in our budget uh, also allocation for visiting researchers. So feel free to, to reach out to, to me or to Aarhus University or our blockchain center over there. Another thing that is important for us is that everybody in this room, I'm sure, is, is, is very excited about the space, is very convinced that it has a, a big role to play. But when you go out there and you speak to real business and you speak to CEOs in banks, you'll always be able to find an enthusiast at some level in a business. But when you're talking CEO level, that's, a, that's a, not a lot of focus, to be honest, on blockchain. We, we think and overestimate sometimes how much, how much traction we really have. And, and it's not as much as we think sometimes. So we have an educational effort to do. As an example, I, I, I do a TV show in Denmark, which is kind of uh, sort of a cross between Shark Tank and uh, The Apprentice type thing. But it's a funnel where you end up with an investment in one, in one company. And I got 700 applicants this year. And there was not one serious blockchain. I was really hoping for a serious blockchain project because I wanted to, to have that in the program and to, to use that as an educational. But out of 700 old Danish companies, uh, not a single serious blockchain project. And that just kind of opened my eyes to maybe some of us are overestimating how far we are at this point, right? So there's, a, there's an educational effort to, to be done, explaining the benefits to the public, explaining the, the workings of, of blockchain, and, and focus also on solving the right problems. You know, sometimes I, I feel that people are sort of trying to stick in a blockchain wherever they can, and, and many places, uh, uh, you know, a, a traditional distributed database would do an equal or better job. But let, let's get it in there where it really makes a, a difference. Uh, and let's make access easier so that also SMEs can, can adopt it and non-tax savvy organizations uh, get away from, from the heavy focus on speculation and Bitcoin and the somewhat dubious image of, of crypto that the public has. And let's get to a real appreciation of the business potential that, that really stretches out to nearly any, any business in the world. This is about media work. It's about influencing regulators. It's about influencing politicians, business leaders, thought leaders. And I tell you, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, but we will overcome all of this. And I believe we, we are in the middle of a major, major business opportunity and a major new change to, to many of the structures that we know in society. To go back to the mid-90s, where, where we were looking at the internet, uh, uh, I think there are many parallels. As I mentioned, a lot of skepticism, uh, 
a lot of people that couldn't really figure out how to use this thing. There was a lot of technical challenges. We're talking right way back when you had the screaming modem, which not many of you will have experienced, but, but really, really, you had to wait a minute and a half to download a picture or something like that, right? And it wasn't really used for very much other than simple information and a little bit of porn already back then, right? Uh, so, so, so a lot of people were very skeptical at the time, and I remember all of my own salespeople and, 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 and account executives in the bank were extremely skeptical of me and my partner spending all the money on, on this new technology. They thought it would have been much better spent at bigger bonuses and stuff like that, right? So, and I think that there's some, uh, there's some uh, parallels here, there's some lessons to be learned. And I think the really important one is um, who was it that drove early adoption of the internet? Um, it was not. It was not the big corporates. It was not the financial sector. It was smaller businesses. It was SMEs. It was people that made a special use case, like we did, for example, for for trading uh, uh, there. And it was actually a lot of smaller players that built it bottom up by saying, "Here's a piece of publicly available infrastructure that we can use for something. Oh, all of a sudden I can transmit my information a little easier. Oh, all of a sudden I can make a little shop and sell some of my my uh, my products there instead of just in my normal stuff and and it was actually it was actually coming from the from the bottom up and and I think we shouldn't underestimate that we need to make that possible to happen here also certainly when we're talking about the public blockchain space because the big boys and certainly the finance industry will obviously be heavily focused on on private blockchains and and for many good reasons uh, uh, in terms of of, of risk and uh, uh, the asym asymmetry between risk and and what happens to banks if something goes wrong. So, uh, but we can't forget these smaller adopters, and I think that, that that's very important to make it easy and accessible and understandable and not too nerdy for, for people to, to use this. Of course, everybody contributes to, to the development, uh, and it's important to support the innovation by, by all the stakeholders, uh, uh, whether it's uh, JP Morgan coin or it's mature. Uh, businesses using private blockchains, so some of the bigger, uh, big technology players in the space, all of them, of course, contribute to, to making us more knowledgeable about what can this, what can this technology actually be used for, what can it, uh, what, where can it take us in the future. Uh, very important to, uh, to make sure that we, we get a, even broader support uh, and, and many more use cases for, uh, for developing innovation in this space. Uh, I think some of them will be very, very trivial to begin with. Uh, you know, simple things like timestamping and provenance, and obviously uh, uh, incorruptible data, etc. The the real big, the real big innovation will probably come at a later stage, exactly as it did in in the internet. You know, the the really big uh, new business model was not in the not in the first wave, but in the second wave uh, in the in the early zeros, uh, and I think it's going to be be very similar to that. On, 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 an, on an investment side of things, if I wear my investment hat, the reason I like the protocol side of things is that when I look back at the, at the, at the 90s with the internet, there was no such opportunity as investing in, in, in the internet per se. You could only really invest in applications on the internet, and there were plenty of them. Uh, many, many, many of them failed. Very hard to find the, the, the value in there. Whereas it was, on the other hand, quite obvious, if you could have bought a, a share in the internet per se, uh, that probably would have been a pretty healthy investment. I think if you imagine the internet company would, would without a doubt, be the most valuable corporation if the, in the world if it existed, right? Um, but it doesn't, and you couldn't. Uh, but you can now, because actually there is very good opportunities to invest in, in various protocols coming out. And for me, that is... Uh, the lower hanging fruit, I think, that uh, identifies some of the serious projects in that area, uh, and 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 then uh, look for for applications when that infrastructure is solid enough to also support support the the applications out there. You've probably seen that famous uh, Gartner slide uh, with you know 2030. There's a very very long bar and it stops at 3.1 trillion dollars, right? And everybody's focused at that end of the chart which is very exciting because 3.1 trillion is quite a bit of money. But if you look to the left side of that chart, have you noticed how 19, 2019 looks or how 2020 looks or even 2021 where they're at 1% of 2030, right? About $30 billion or $35 billion, if I remember correctly, is their assessment of the, 
of the business potential in 2021, which I remind you is two years from now. What I'm saying with that is I think we have to be patient. I think in the long run, there's massive, massive rewards to be had. But I think just as in, 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 in the internet days, patience is also a very, very important characteristic if you want to be in this space, because it is going to take time to, to develop this. And it's going to take somewhat longer time than we than most people probably think today. But it will ultimately be a real game changer. It will ultimately hold enormous promise for the world and for the businesses that are involved. And it's always good to be an early mover in a big space. What is the ultimate promise of this? Well, in my view, it's, 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 I'm not sure if it's com comparable to the internet, which created basically an entirely new marketplace for, for entirely new business models. But I think it's close uh, because whereas the internet completely revolutionized the way we treat information, uh, I think the blockchain uh, has, has the, the opportunity to revolutionize other aspects of business and create also new new businesses uh, that, that we can hardly think of today. Once we solve the most obvious technical issues and the, the ideological stuff that, that I think is a little bit self-defeating around anonymity, etc., can probably run on the side, but, but, but you're not going to get mainstream adoption from big business or finance uh, if there's any chance of, of anonymous actors uh, being at the other end of a transaction. But of course, what we can really solve here are things like single points of failure. If you think about it in the traditional world today, nearly every single process has some kind of single point of failure, at least uh, very few points where it can fail. It goes for nearly everything, everything you do. Uh, and, and to get away from that single point of failure risk is, is an enormous move forward, right? Finality is an enormous move forward. You know, today, if you do a transaction, normal people think they've done it, but they haven't. Uh, you've only done that transaction several days later. It can be reversed in multiple ways, and, uh, and it does. The Lehman Brothers reversed the trade on me the day they closed and, and stole 25 million bucks from me. Uh, and that's actually a party you wouldn't have expected it from normally, right? So, so these single point of failures exist most of the time. They don't represent a problem, but sometimes they do. And in 2008, it, it could have been catastrophic. We were one hour away from a total meltdown in, in the world economy. Uh, the other thing that we're solving here is a trustless uh, environment out there, right? Um, I don't think people fully understand how much money goes into creating trust, but, but I heard estimates of uh, in excess of 10% of the economy is basically going to, of GDP is going towards trust establishment. Uh, think about it, you know, the whole legal sector, all your lawyers, m many, many functions in the finance sector, many, many functions in the public sector, is really only about introducing trust between two parties that don't have trust. This is a massive a, a number that goes into this, which in principle, if you could make that much lighter and much easier on a number of, 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 of different connections, not only could you reduce cost very significantly, but you could also, even more importantly, I think, make business possible where it's not possible today. Because today, in many, many cases, the establishment of sufficient trust is so difficult and so expensive that it simply is not worth it in order to do the business. And in my view, half of the business that could be done in this world is probably not being done because of that issue. And, and I think uh, if we can find solutions to a few years down the line that we can meet anybody in this room we never met before, but we can do a transaction, we can make an agreement that we know will be on it, uh, even though we haven't tracked each other's payment records or each other's history, that, that the implications of that is, is so gigantic, also, also in terms of direct peer-to-peer -peer businesses that we, that, we, that we can't really even think about the full potential today. So removing the single point of failure and, and introducing the trust where no trust exists today is, is extremely crucial. I had a meeting with the, with the, with the, um, with the chairman of the Swiss Central Bank a, a couple of months ago, and he said quite correctly, uh, uh, but Lars, uh, everybody trusts the Swiss franc, and everybody trusts the Swiss National Bank, and everybody trusts we have the most developed notary system in the world, etc. And he's absolutely right. Everybody largely trusts the Swiss National Bank, Swiss institutions, and, and the Swiss notary system. So that's not what we need to fix. <laughs> we need to fix all the places where people don't trust each other. And I think that's, that's very important, too. Of course, you can add some efficiency gains to even, I'm sure, the Swiss National Bank. But, um, 
but that's not where the real opportunity lies. The real opportunity lies where, where trust doesn't exist today. So uh, we are only a few years away from being able to remove all these expensive middlemen and, and, and uh, um, uh, cost factors in trust, and, and I think that that, uh, that really holds a lot of promise. We are, we are moving towards a world where we have to use much less money on, on fraud uh, prevention, on on, on uh, protecting ourselves against criminality. We, we moving towards a world where we can actually rely on information by and large. There's a lot of technology in going in the opposite direction, but, but actually by being able to timestamp uh, or, or, or to, 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 to uh, introduce on blockchain news and information, et cetera, that, that is known to be true, I think will, 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 will take us quicker in the right direction than deep fake, for example, can take us in the wrong direction. And all of these things of, of trust and being able to, to rely on information and, 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 and do business without enormous processes around them will have a vast impact on the economy. And I, I think that, that the Gardner number, I have no idea how you get to those kind of numbers. So it could be two, it could be five, it could be 2.6 uh, trillion, but it's going to have a ma massive impact. And you're here at the beginning of it, and I think uh, everybody's like, whoa, we got to finish very quickly. There's no rush here. Get it right. Get the products. Uh, working rather than, than rushing out there. If you think the banks have already made decisions, forget it. They move extremely slowly. They will be nowhere also two years from now. So uh, so take it easy, but, but make your product perfect, right? So again, I would like to congratulate you with uh, choosing this field of, of industry and coming here so far and being here today and choosing the science-based approach, which I'm sure is, is, is absolutely the right one. So I wish you all the all the best in your, your own personal quest for, for making the world a better place, and uh, good luck to everyone. Thank you. <laughs>